All right, so now that we have seen how to create our own 3D brushes, we're ready to proceed to looking at the taper modifier in 3D Coat, which is a relatively new addition, and you're going to find it very invaluable. It's one of those little hidden gems in 3D Coat because it's somewhat obscure, but it can really save you a lot of time. The reason I say this is because previously you had to rely on brush pressure alone in these first few draw modes in order to get some type of a tapered effect. In practice, it was pretty difficult. So this first one covers radius and depth. The second one affects just your brush depth. And the third one is practically identical to the first one, except that your brush pressure modifies opacity. So really, it's only relevant in the paint room. So if you use this in the sculpt room, basically it's the same thing as using the first one. So I just wanted to make sure to mention that. And this fourth one basically reverses the entire operation of this first one because as you press harder, it's going to create a smaller stroke. Whereas in the other one, it's going to be just the reverse. It's going to actually scale your brush radius up as you press down. So you also happen to have the ability to change your curves if you need, and you can store them and reload them and so on. So with that said, this works with a great deal of reliance upon the type of brush you actually choose here. So it's not going to override this absolute brush, meaning this absolute brush here doesn't do anything different with your brush pressure. So uh, it's not going to modulate your radius, it's not going to modulate your depth, it's just constant across the entire brush stroke. So this taper effect or this taper modifier is not going to help you with the absolute brush. Okay, so let's go to the first brush here and with our pattern that we created as a 3D brush we want to check our depth value we also want to plan ahead on how much spacing we require do we want it to be very close as it's being brushed on or do we want it spaced out quite a bit if we want it spaced out we want to go to our brush options panel here and adjust our spacing check this and modify your spacing accordingly okay so let me just go with what we have here. We'll make sure tapering is turned off for the moment. And you can see the pattern that we have. It's kind of uniform. If I press lightly and then harder as I brush, you can see the changes. So again, you did have a little bit of tapering capability beforehand, but it was a little bit harder to control. So this new capability really takes over and gives you more control than having to rely on just pressure alone. So, um, yeah. I can also choose rotate along stroke. Okay, if I don't, it's just going to adopt the default direction. But if I have that checked, then it's going to rotate it as it feels it needs to. Okay. So this could come in very handy right here. And I could adjust my fall off to kind of clip the edges just a little bit if I need. So let me adjust my spacing. So again, light pressure, hard pressure, light pressure again. I find it a little bit hard to control that. So let's go ahead and turn our tapering on. I'm going to turn modulate tapering with pin pressure off just uh, temporarily. Now here comes another example where you need to pre-plan just a little bit regarding your stroke. Just how long do you want 3D Coat to allow this tapering to occur? If you want a long stroke then 3D Coat requires you to increase the tapering length a little bit. Okay. If you want short close strokes then you want to reduce this number down. So we'll hit OK. I'll point out here how you can create your own brush profile, but let's just go with this for now. And you can see it's going to start from large to small by default. So basically whatever brush size you have, that's pretty much where it's going to start. And maybe that's what you want. 
but if we go back here um, yeah we can change it down and you can see you can just make very quick and abrupt patterns like this so three coat kind of clips it off for you All right uh, yeah let's go back here and let's turn our tapering length up a bit and check modulate tapering with pin pressure so this restores some user level control as you're brushing in terms of using pin pressure just as you did previously however 3d coat is still largely in control of creating this tapering effect so it's a balance in that sense okay so now if I press really hard at the beginning, you can see it changes. Press lightly, it's more of a small pattern, so it changes a lot based on your pin pressure. So I'll start lightly, press hard, then lightly again. There you go. So let me reduce my depth value down a little bit. I'll start here. Oops. So it's a very good way to add certain types of patterns, uh, scales and bumps much more quickly than you could just simply sculpting them in one at a time. Let's do the same thing here. Reduce my brush size down. light pressure go back up here turn that off hit OK it's very cool All right, so let's uh, look at kind of a wrinkle pattern like this. Sometimes, depending on your preferences, 3D Coat may memorize uh, your brush alpha for a given tool. So let me choose this brush alpha, and I probably want to adjust the spacing quite a bit. Rather than rotate a long stroke, I may want to have 3D Coat modulate or change the rotation of the brush alpha to break it up a little bit so it's not such a uniform pattern. So I'll change the rotation amplitude. And I'll check my taper here. The top of the vertical line represents 100% of your currently selected brush scale and depth value, whereas the horizontal line represents the length of your stroke. This time, let's bring it down and click anywhere in the middle of it to create a spline point. I can drag it up. And as you may have seen with other videos that regard working with splines, it's the same concept. You can right click on a point to change the type. Right click again and it just cycles through the three different options you have. You see you have a B spline where the point is off the curve. If I right click again it restores it to its default spline time which is you know your standard spline. It runs through the point but it provides some degree of curvature just not quite as much as the B spline. So you can save it, reload it later on, or you can go back to the default, whichever you prefer. So hit OK. As a brush, you can see how that's working. And I need to invert the tool action. I actually want it to go the other direction. I want it to embed. So basically, to invert that, I just choose Invert Tool. Or you could hold the Control key, and it'll do it for you. OK. So, let me bring my fall off value up a bit and change the rotation amplitude a little bit more. There we go. Let's 
I need to bring my depth value down because it's going to be just a slight surface effect. I don't need a lot of extrusion. And before I proceed, I want to make one last check of my taper settings. I want to enable brush pressure this time and adjust the stroke length. So I'm going to undo and I'm going to go ahead and check invert tool. So you see this allows me to really feather it in. And I can start with a smaller pattern here where I need smaller proportions. Now just remember whenever you select another tool or another brush that 3D Coat is going to memorize the last taper profile you had for that given tool. Okay, so let's go back to the draw brush here and you see what I mean. Okay. Increase my depth value just a bit. And I need to increase the spacing amount. Bring up the length a little bit. Now you may notice most curved profiles go in the opposite direction. They start low and they end high. So it's just opposite here because you're starting out at 100% by default and ending at 0%. So let's reverse that and see what it does. So it's going to taper early on, but then it's going to stay constant throughout the rest of your stroke. So if you allowed modulate tapering with real pin pressure, then you were still able to modulate the tapering at the very end of the stroke if you lightened up a little bit. So I'll undo that. But if you turn that off, yeah, you can just see how it's not tapering at all, at least not at the end. Okay, that's the basic gist of this particular feature. However, we're going to pick up in the next video covering some more practical examples, including painting as well. So stay tuned.